I'm Thomas Cunningham, and welcome to week one of Urban Playground's series on composers of color and female composers, our uh, composer short series, just giving you some facts and, and bite-sized stories about these composers. Uh, this week, Samuel Coleridge-Taylor. Coleridge-Taylor was an African-English composer, uh, late 19th century, early 20th, who really made a name for himself with his, uh, while still in college, this piece he wrote called Hiawatha. Uh, which turned into a trilogy and an overture and was really a smashing international success, especially within the, the choral-heavy tradition and, and society of, of um, England at that time. This is something that was done annually for decades and decades and decades. It was a, um, a more modern-day messiah in these choral traditions that continue today, where unfortunately Hiawatha has more or less fallen by the wayside. There's some old footage if you want to see uh, white people looking ridiculous. <laughs> Coleridge Taylor wrote Hiawatha while he was still a student, and his teacher, uh, Charles Stanford, uh, conducted the, the premiere that was really well reviewed, and the trilogy and overture that followed should have paid for the rest of Samuel Coleridge Taylor's life. Uh, but this was at a time when so often composers sold uh, works to publishers for a one-time fee, and then that was sort of it. Uh, this is the same thing that happened to uh, Edward Elgar, whose early violin and piano piece, uh, Salut d'Amour, uh, same thing, made him very, very little money despite being a, a remarkable success. Um, Elgar caught wind of, of Coleridge Taylor and, and really mentored him for quite a while before they had a falling out as composers are wont to do. So we'll try and do a couple tales and then a myth every week on this series. And this week, uh, the myth is about Coleridge Taylor's name. Full name, Samuel Coleridge Taylor. No hyphens. But today, so often, you will see Samuel Coleridge hyphen Taylor. That was a printing mistake made early in his 20s uh, that he just decided to roll with. He did not go by Samuel, he went by Coleridge. So if you ever see his signature, or any of the documents earlier in his life it is S period Coleridge Taylor. So Coleridge Taylor was not African American, obviously, uh, and did not understand the relationship between whites and blacks in America and sort of had that, that lack of knowledge come to a head when he was in America. He was really prized and beloved in the US by the black community uh, in Washington, DC. Especially, they formed a choral society in his honor just to perform Hiawatha. <sighs> Despite how beloved he was in the U.S., um, race is such an issue that, that he that was distant to him at times, quite frankly. Coleridge Taylor is not talked enough about his relationship to black source materials and himself as a composer. I think from what I've read in his diaries, he wanted to be a great composer first. Um, he had a racial awakening when he was invited to the Pan-African Conference um, in London, and then as an outgrowth of that, became involved sort of secondhand with all the, the, um, the Jubilee Singers material, no longer the Fisk Jubilee Singers, they had sort of disbanded and the name was being bandied about by a lot of different groups in that style. Uh, Frederick J. Luden, uh, lived in, in London for a time, and he and, and Coleridge Taylor became, became friends. And I think that is where he learned about Deep River. Deep River, nowadays, is one of the most beloved spiritual tunes. But if you look at the early collections by the musicologists, by the just publishers, by uh, even the Fisk Jubilee Singers in their songbooks, for years and years and years, Deep River wasn't included. It wasn't well known. Uh, it, it wasn't even referenced or indexed. There's a great article by um, Shirley, the, uh, uh, Wayne, Wayne D. Shirley, if you, uh, The Coming of Deep River, if you want to read more about this. But um, Samuel Coleridge Taylor came across um, this tune eventually, and when he composed his great work, 24 Negro Melodies, it's uh, for, for piano, piano work, uh, Deep River, he writes at the bottom, is, is in the composer's opinion, one of the most moving uh, tunes or melodies in the whole collection. He's, he's not wrong. Um, so Samuel Coleridge Taylor is really responsible for bringing Deep River into the public consciousness. He had, by association, 
um, written a, a pair of pieces, a gypsy suite, he called it, um, spelled with I's, not Y's, um, that the famous American virtuoso violinist Maud Powell had, had toured with for a while. And um, after he wrote, Coleridge Taylor wrote, uh, the 24 Negro Melodies, uh, Maud Powell also fell in love with Deep River and transcribed his, um, his arrangement of the work as a violin and piano um, piece. And she would tour with that and then famously record it. And this is the first recording of a work by a black composer. 